special meeting of the Parkside Council to order. We will start with a Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand with me for a moment of silence first to honor the victims and first responders who, whose lives were lost while trying to save others 22 years ago, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Roman. Here. President Cost. Here. Vice President Costi. Mr. Bull. Here. Mr. Powell. Absolutely. Mr. Sidlow. Here. Ms. Percival. Here. Mr. Swigert. Here. Mr. Wills. Here. Ms. Catania. Absolutely. Still up. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, just to let you know how things are going to roll here, um, Mr. Wills needs to be out of here by 6.45. He has a meeting in Brookhaven at 7 o'clock. So um, instead of having a call of citizens before we begin, we will still have it before we vote. Um, but I will say what I need to say. Mr. Wills will follow with what he needs to say. And then uh, we will invite you to come up. You can speak for uh, three minutes. Uh, one representative from the fire company is welcome to speak, um, as well as any residents. Um, <clears throat> so everyone will get a chance to speak. And then if Mr. Wills needs to leave in the meantime, that's fine. Um, at that point, we will take our two votes and that will be it. So I will begin. Um, today is the 22nd anniversary of the day we all watched as thousands were killed, including 343 members of the New York City Fire Department and 71 law enforcement officers who rushed to the scene and risked their lives to save others. Many more have died since then from their efforts that day. Today, we are joined from the by the volunteers from the Parkside Fire Company, who, like those 911 heroes, are willing to rush toward danger to save lives and property. I would like to say thank you for your service. You are here because you believe that I want to take away your funding. I realize that you are concerned and angry, and I understand why you feel that way. Unfortunately, you are getting all your information from people who have been trying to have me removed from council since I was elected, and none of you have spoken directly with me. Please know that when I refer to the fire company, I am talking about the people who decide how to spend the money. A little background for those who haven't been following along for the past few years. In 2020, Rob and Rob Powers and former Mayor Dietman approached council because the fire company was losing the ambulance service. We were told by Ms. Percival that she reviewed their finances, but I was never allowed to see their books. In the 2020 budget meetings, we were told by Ms. Percival that the fire chief would attend, would attend the monthly council meetings and provide a financial report. There was no report in January or February of 2021, and then we were told the chief would provide quarterly reports. <clears throat> this is an example of, the, of what they provided us. We received four, three reports in 2021, two in 2022, and one so far this year in April. 
we were told numerous times by Rob Powers, Tom Dietman, and Charlie Percival that the fire company was a nonprofit with tax exempt status, despite the fact that the website where one can find the 990 forms filed by nonprofit organizations reports that the fire company lost their nonprofit status in, of, in May of 2018 because they failed to file their forms since 2014. This was the last one filed. Now this is just four pages, so about seven of the 22 pages that is involved with the 990 form. I have not seen a single official financial document that was filed since 2014. I met with the fire chief last month, a few days after Mr. Powers' second arrest. I was told at that time, Mr. Powers was no longer serving as president pending the outcome of the charges. I explained to the chief that the reports have been, have, that have been provided to council over the years are not sufficient, especially in light of the charges against the president. Why is this report not sufficient? First, it is a list of numbers that could have been pulled out of the air, as far as I know. There are no bills attached, no copies of receipts, nothing but a list of numbers. If you go to the bank for a loan and give them this, they will ask you where the official documents are. Your tax return, pay stubs, loan documents. The forms you file with the IRS are signed, attesting that the numbers you have recorded are true and accurate under penalty of law you are going to have to give the bank more than your word. I have seen zero official documents. No, wait, I did see a couple technically. Mr. Powers and I had a meeting in the firehouse and he handed me two documents to show me that they have two EIN numbers, but he snatched the papers away from me when I tried to write down the numbers and told me I wasn't allowed to have them. We were told we would see a budget for the fire company. I have never seen one. I have never been given a copy of their tax filings for 2021 or 2022. I have not seen a single bill or bank statement. Here is what I have been told. The 1200 that they reported for janitorial every three months has been paid to Rob Powers and is for the entire building, including the recreation hall. They have also listed close to $10,000 for utilities, cable, phone, and security. Is that for the entire building? I've seen no bills, no receipts, just this piece of paper with no signature. Even if every number in this report is genuine and accurate, how much of our taxpayers' money is being used to pay for the recreation hall? Are there two different bank accounts for the firehouse and the recreation hall? Do they keep the finances separate? Parkside's Fire Company, which celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2019, was the premier fire company it was held up as the standard for other com companies to aim for. Today, the Parkside Fire, Parkside Fire Company's reputation hardly resembles that of its past, something I have heard from numerous sources. Apparently, Parkside is not the backup fire company for the towns around us. Each town notifies the 911 system of their primary and backup fire companies to call when there is an emergency in their town. At this point, Unless it is a Parkside, unless it is Parkside Fire Company's turn in the on-call rotation, our company is only called for emergencies within its borders. You can check this for yourself on Delco Dispatch, like I did, because nobody has actually told me anything. Ideally, the fire company and borough council should work hand in hand with integrity and transparency to spend taxpayer money responsibly and restore that stellar reputation. In the past, they engaged in successful fundraising, totaling over 44,000 in 2012 and over 30,000 in 2013 and 14. I have no idea how much they have raised in the years since then. Some of the fire company's financial woes are due to poor management. I was told that the air conditioner was damaged in a storm and it, would co it will cost $40,000 to restore air conditioning in the building. I was also told that should have been paid for by their insurance company, but nobody filed a claim, and after a year, it was too late. They might as well have taken $40,000 and thrown it in the trash. Are our taxpayers supposed to foot the bill for that? Last month, we held a spe special council meeting and voted to require that the fire company submit to a financial analysis in order to get their next check in September. 
Mr. Wills, who has had a long relationship with both the fire company and the borough, was the one to bring it up in our executive meeting, given the news of the charges against Mr. Powers. Our solicitor was contacted shortly thereafter by the solicitor for the fire company, who said they were planning to cooperate. On August 8th, the treasurer sent the solicitor a list of documents they need. Weeks went by and the treasurer did not receive anything. No documents, no emails. Mr. Wills was unable to reach the solicitor. He asked me to call and I left a voicemail letting him know that we had not received any documents. On August 31st, Mr. Wills sent another letter. Last Wednesday, the fire company statement was posted on Facebook. That's how I found out about it. It was not emailed to counsel. It was not mailed to us. It was posted on Facebook. We finally received a letter from the fire company's solicitor Friday, which said that the fire company objected to using Brinker Simpson, which is a reputable accounting firm. Why is last Friday the first time we are hearing this objection from their lawyer? They waited over a month to let us know they want a different firm. The time for that conversation was a month ago. This looks like an attempt to stall and not provide the request, requested documents until perhaps they won't be required to. Council voted unanimously for Brinker Brink Simpson to conduct the analysis of their books, with Ms. Percival qualifying her vote, wanting only 2020 to present. The other five of us voted to look back to 2018. At this point, in an effort to resolve this, Mr. Wills told them we will accept 2021 to present. The solicitor for the fire company told Mr. Wills that he never saw the statement the fire company released until after it was posted. He also confirmed that their, their claim in the statement that he sent me a cease and desist letter is not true. Somebody signed their name to that statement, but it was attributed to the fire company officers and, and members. The entire statement was attacked against me personally. It claims that the other council members are not responsible for voting for Brinker Simpson to look at their books because they are all my puppets, including Mr. Wills. Nothing. I'm really not that powerful. I do not control anybody in this room. They claim that I have a personal <clears throat> vendetta. What about Mr. Wills and the council members who voted with me? Mr. Wills was the one who brought it up in the executive session, and I was sitting all the way across the room, so it isn't possible that I was pulling his strings. Their Facebook statement ends with the claim that the fire company has been transparent and has nothing to hide. I have no idea what their annual expenses are. I don't know if some of the expenses they list on this report is for the whole building. Are the taxpayer funds we provide taxed again since the fire company is not tax exempt? I am far from the only person who wants to know the answers to basic questions like these. Nobody wants to defund the fire company, but it is irresponsible for us to continue to give hundreds of thousands of dollars to the fire company without proof that the money was spent on fire service for Parkside. We were told after Mr. Power's second arrest that he was no longer president of the fire company. My understanding is that he is very much still running the show. Does he want to provide the documents? Was he behind the statement attacking me? Does the fire company want to continue receiving taxpayer money from the residents? The residents deserve to know how that money is being spent. Volunteers, do you trust the person who has been charged with four separate thefts to decide for all of you whether or not to cooperate? Is Absolutely. He, is he acting in the best interest of the fire company or his own? After stalling for weeks and the release of the statement, we notified the solicitor for the fire company that they had until today to provide a significant number of documents. <clears throat> we have not received anything, so it appears that they are not going to cooperate. Despite this, I am not closing the door on a few on the in the future to discussing with the fire company a way to move forward together but my duty on council is to the residents of parkside we are obligated to provide fire services um, you all may have noticed there's something on the back of your agenda i invite you to read along with me if you'd like 
Though we all support our fire company, our responsibilities are with the residents. Legally, we have to provide police and fire protection. This does not mean that we have to financially support our own fire company to stay open if it seems that is an impossibility. We have five fire companies within a one mile radius. Yes, I definitely want to and do support our fire company, but our community will not be without fire protection if they financially have to close their doors. Any idea where I got that from? I didn't write it. This was written by Shirley in an email in January of 2020. And I totally agree with her. Our community must not be without fire protection and I would prefer to stick with our fire company. But we have to explore our options because I have not seen any indication that the fire company is willing to live up to its end of the bargain. Why is the fire company refusing to open its books? Ask yourself why whoever is calling the shots would rather close the firehouse down than open their books. Jay. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Again, this is a special advertised meeting of the Parkside Borough Council to address two specific issues. Number one, to appoint a new code compliance officer. And number two, the solicitation of bids for fire protection services. Therefore, I am going to request that at citizens' comments that we limit the comments to those two specific issues that are before Borough Council this evening. As to the question of the proposed future funding for the fire company, that is an issue for another day, specifically September the 20th of 2023. As the council president indicated, we are requesting that citizens' comments be limited to three minutes per speaker so that we can hear from the maximum number of people. And the, and the appellate courts of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have agreed that that three-minute limitation is, in fact, in compliance with the Pennsylvania Sunshine Act. And so with that, I think we are now prepared to hear from... Well, um, were you going to say something about... Regarding the financial um, reports that we're requesting, and no, okay. <clears throat> not this time. Okay, because there might not be more time. This is your only time to talk. Again, the financial reports that we are requesting, and again, just so it's clear, the uh, borough treasurer communicated uh, with all of council today and indicated that the scope of what she would be performing would be not a full, comprehensive, and encompassing, and intrusive audit. Basically, she's going to perform an analysis of the fire company's books and records. She'll examine the financial records to verify the financial reporting and see if the accounting information is accurate. And again, we will also analyze the financial operations of the firehouse to determine if there are efficiencies that the firehouse can implement to approve financial stability. And again, to try to cooperate uh, with the fire company and try to expedite this process, we have agreed that we would look more closely at, and what we're going to be focusing on is years 2021, 2022, and 2023. That are the years that there has been substantial funding of taxpayer dollars uh, to the fire company. And so with that, I believe we are now prepared, to, excuse me, for public comment. Do I have a sign-up sheet? There is. Okay. There's a sign-up sheet out there if you would like to... Um, 
write your address down, state your name, and um, then you got three minutes. Excuse me, since you brought my name into the conversation, and I will make a point of noting to the public the statement that Mrs. Guy read from 2020 was only a portion of an email. The rest of this email, and I unfortunately was not told ahead of time we were going to present this, just like several other issues I'm going to bring up. And I will speak quick, quickly. My point of this email was to have council add funding to the budget for the year of 2021. So the entire email is not here. And Mrs. Guy um, alluded. No, you wanted to do what? I'm going to speak quickly. Mrs. Guy alluded to a letter that was sent uh, September 8th to Mr. Galloway, which I just received today, as I'm not sure who else received it. And my question before we go to public comment is, why wasn't the rest of council able to comment or make suggestions on this letter to Mr. Galloway concerning your demands for this financial audit? Mr. Wills and I had a conversation regarding it. Um, he did not indicate at any time that this was something that we needed to discuss with council because we were purely um, just reinforcing what we had already voted on. We voted on the audit. You've made other demands in here. Um, one of which is the borough cannot make firm commitments as to present or future funding levels. I did not agree to that, but yet you put it out to Mr. Wills to have it directed to Mr. Galloway. I don't know that I really thought that we needed to put that in. I think that was Mr. Wills that felt that that was the appropriate response. And if I remember, we were told that we were putting it in as a line item so that if the firehouse did not uh, live up to its part of the bargain, which was to provide a budget and other documents, um, that we could then divert those funds, and I believe it was Mr. Long who said we could divert them, for example, to Brookhaven. That wasn't my question. My question was, why wasn't all of council available to make suggestions as to the reply to Mr. Galloway versus you and our solicitor? Mr. Long? I can simply indicate it, uh, Shirley. I, I believe time was of the essence and again, we needed to try to expedite uh, this process along. Uh, again, as I think we all agreed it had been a month. We had not unfortunately received any reply from the fire company. So I think we had to at least try to expedite this process, indicate time was of the essence, and indicated that we need to have some movement in the very near future. I would have appreciated, I know I sent an email with my input. I would have appreciated given the opportunity as an elected official before this letter went out to have every member on council have a right to say what was going to be sent to this attorney. Noted, thank you. Right. Sarah Haynes, 18 Beachwood. Um, I pulled up a book today called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and I'm gonna turn the page. 55 and it says breathe before you speak and it says this simple strategy has had remarkable results for virtually everyone I know who has tried it the almost immediate results include increased patience added perspective and as a side benefit more gratitude and respect from others the strategy itself is remarkably simple it involves nothing more than pausing breathing after the person whom you are speaking is finished so it doesn't seem like this decision has been discussed with our residents. This is bad. We were not informed as residents that this ad was going to go out before it happened. Um, Wait, we have to notify you that we're going to notify you that there's going to be a meeting? I think it's respectful to notify our residents that you're going to put an ad out for bids for service. We didn't put an ad out for bids. We put an ad out that we were having a meeting. We have not put an ad out for bids. To, to accept bids. No, that's what the ad was. The announcement of the meeting and it specified what the meeting was regarding. Why is the only discussion you are having with our residents about important decisions online? 
I actually prefer to do it here. And then the only insight we get from why you feel these decisions are good for our community gets leaked out on Facebook. Like besides right here and right now, like this is the first answer we have really detailed answer we have gotten as to why the fire company is being looked into. And for the past two years, the future of anything Parkside Borough related has not been predictable. And we has, as residents have the right to a predictable future. I just think that this whole thing is irresponsible and not fair to our residents. Michael DeFurio, 311 West Shelton. Um, I have a question for you regarding the audit. Um, do we have a copy of the audit from Brookhaven Police when they provided service to us in the past year? And again, Mr. DeFurio, De an audit is technically a misnomer. There's got to be an examination of the financial records. Well, the fire company. Correct. That is what is being proposed. But as far as it audited, again, there will be no audited statements produced by the borough treasurer. So I just want to make sure. We're well, clear. you guys keep asking for the for the financials of the fire department. Did you ask for the th same things from Brookhaven Police when they provided service to us? We were not providing a significant portion of their. That's got nothing to do with it. Okay. It doesn't matter how much service. It either is or isn't. No, we did not. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. My second point is, if this firehouse is currently nonprofit, as far as I'm concerned, the township is, or the borough is not donating it's money not to them. They're paying for a service. They're not nonprofit. They're not nonprofit? They Correct. are They are a nonprofit currently? They are not a nonprofit. Correct. They are a for-profit business right now. Okay. Which means they need to provide you an itemized bill of what services they're providing for your payment, because you are no longer donating. You are now paying them. Aside from that, their personal finances is none of our business. What they spend their money on. I'm, I'm a business owner. that's not true, because we give a significant amount of taxpayer dollars to this company. Therefore, we are obligated as council members to know that that money is being spent. Okay, so once again, I'm a business owner. My customers are entitled to an itemized bill for the services and work I'm providing to them. They are not entitled to know what I spend my personal money on. It's none of their business. So as far as Parkside Fire Company, if they want to replace the transmission in their truck or buy new hoses, buy t-shirts, have a party, that's not our business. Our business is for X amount of dollars, I believe it's 150000 per year. Then what services are we getting? Are we getting fire services 24-7, 365? Are we getting medical response services? That is all we should be interested in. Okay. Once, once you're past that, it's not our business. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Debbie Rostaglio at 2 West Elvin. Um, first off, I want to say back in 2006, in the early morning hours, I believe the early February, it was around Valentine's Day, we had a home fire. And it was a very devastating home fire. Um, thank you, Parkside uh, Fire Department. You were there within minutes. Um, there were other fire companies that did arrive, but much later. We lost so much, and things were irreplaceable. Had we not had our local... Parkside Fire Company, we could have lost so much more, including the lives of where our children were out, but could have been our, our fur babies. Um, so I just want to thank you all so much. Um, going forward, I, I understand, I, I agree with what Mike said. I think Parkside residents as a whole agree that an audit of any taxpayer funded money is fine. But to delve into anything else that is um, not basically none of our business, if they get it through fundraising or whatever, however, however they get it, I mean, I just think we need to um, have that audit just for taxpayer money. Um, I also noticed when you said that you were talking about their uh, air conditioning and that how it was a waste 
uh, because they didn't get there. And I'm not at all these meetings. This is my first one. But I've heard and I've seen where we've lost grant money. So it's kind of sort of the same thing. No, it is. We, we actually did not lose any grant money. No, but that things could have been, but I mean, it's similar. <laughs> um, I can actually find the meeting where it's for Rodo. Okay, but it's similar. You have to admit. I mean, I know someone else other than... You but know, you stepped up. Grant money was lost, which indicated it was not. It was right. almost it was. missed, from what I understand. No, it really wasn't. Well, that's what I understand. What they've seen. It was a late apply. Okay. It was but if it was, it was caught, you know, the same was thing. That was. And then the other thing is, um, All right. is it something that if you decide to go on and, and bid this out to other companies, what can this be taken as a, a vote, like a, on the election day, where the residents of Parkside get to say yes or no, like a referendum? Well, you can look into how that's done. Well, there, there are ways to get things done. It's not something I do. It's not something that we do as council members. We do not put referendums on the ballot. Okay, so, but it can be done. Yes, yes. it can be done. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, Dave Raymond, Fire Chief, Parkside Borough. First of all, the one thing I want to make clear is we never said no to an audit. We only asked for an unbiased audit from an independent firm. Ever since the lies about the fire company started, it is only right that we do, do our due diligence on investigating the people that want to do the audit. Since they already work for the borough, it's a conflict of interest. We are only asking for a fair audit. It is the borough's right to seek a fire department outside of Parkside to come here. But remember, once you open Pandora's box, there is no closing it. And remember, the fire company owns the borough, the building, not the borough. So you won't be putting a fire truck there. You will now be at the mercy of another town's fire department. Your taxes will be paid to another town further away for fire protection, not your own town. Once that happens, they can in the future raise their prices because by law, like you said, you have to provide fire protection. And they know it too. You currently don't have a fire tax, but it's almost guaranteed to change over the years. We only asked for help. We didn't ask to be the council's political football. Mm -hmm. Ask this question to your council members. What have you done for Parkside Fire Company mm -hmm. besides try to close it? And don't forget that the food pantry that so many of our families have relied on will close as well. And you're going to be <clears throat> that will make certain council members happy, I'm sure. But the residents and others who access it will be forced to seek food elsewhere or go and do without. I also want to comment on the money they say is missing. This is a made up number by you. You said it on camera about the reports. So as noted in our official statement, we were initially told the reports just needed to be generalized as to what we use the money for, not itemized. This money is not missing. We just paid the bills with a list of stating which bills, how much, and what, and who was paid. We plan on going back and amend these reports to reflect a better account of our spending for the past two years. When the borough's current president took over, as she never asked to have that amended, which she could have at that time. The Parkside Fire Company has been in existence for 104 years. In 102 of those years, we were self-sufficient, never receiving any money from the borough taxpayer. The last two years have been a new venture for all of us, as well as the borough. I ask you, should the borough council decide the future of the fire company, or should the residents decide? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Mike Fox, uh, 101 West Forest View. So there's a lot of hearsay in the neighborhood coming each way. Um, looks like maybe there's some problems with some numbers at the firehouse. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. I, I don't know. If it is true, it seems like a personnel issue that you guys should fix rather than closing down the firehouse. It kind of reminds me of uh, throughout the country, especially let's say in 2020, maybe you get a police department, some officers make some mistakes or do something wrong. Citizens get offended. There's maybe, maybe something really bad happened. So people call it a defund that police department. And it's more about maybe uh, sweeping measures or ideology rather than what's good for a town. 
a lot of those towns are now refunding their police departments because everything went to hell. I don't want to see that happen here. So, I mean, that's a real thing we have to think about. If the answer to shutting down the police department is going to be that some other fire company, no matter how close they are, half a mile, a mile, what do we pay for that? What do, that matters here. It, it's a blue collar community. Are they going to keep charging us? Are they going to keep raising these prices over the years to where it, it, it's stressing us? That really does matter. Um, I, I also like to say as a resident, I, I know a lot of people here and I don't get involved with the politics personally at all, but I kind of liked my government best when I didn't know anybody. I didn't need to know you because the trash got picked up one time. The police patrolled the streets. The fire department was around the corner and it felt more like a community that way. Yeah. I could go to work, come home, mow my grass, take care of my family, and I didn't have to deal with this stuff. That's your job. So fix it. Mm -hmm. Fix it without closing down the firehouse. There's a way. There's probably a million ways. So I don't know what is going on behind closed doors. I'm not a smart man, okay? So figure it out. But don't close the firehouse down. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, this is a beautiful small town. Yeah, and it's America. We should have a fire department. There's an aesthetic to that where people want to live here. They want to bring their family here. There's a feeling to that that brings in new neighbors. We should really, really consider these things, you know, before we shut those doors or else it's going to be like that stupid gas station across the street. It's an eyesore, right? That we can't do anything with. So I'll pray for all of you. Figure it the hell out. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Judy Saunders, 62 East Shelton Road. Um, I've been to all the meetings, so I know, and I've supported the firehouse. I, for years, would send pizzas to every meeting you had. I give my donation every year. Every year we've lived here, I support the firehouse. I do not want to see it closed, but I want accountability. I've been told repeatedly that I'm not allowed to ask. I've had Chief after chief stand up here and rage hump this podium and tell me if I've never done a shift or I've never put on fire boots, I don't have the right to ask. I do. It's my taxpayers' money, and they're responsible for spending it correctly. If it is being spent correctly, if everything's being done right, an audit doesn't hurt. If, as you've always told me, because I was told my insurance would skyrocket, triple, I was told. It wouldn't. I called my insurance agent. That was a lot. I was told you were operating under a 501c. That was a lot. Now you are telling me that you've always told me that if we bid out, it's going to be so much more expensive and my taxes are going to skyrocket. So if we get the bids and that proves your point, why would you not want to get the bids? If what you're saying is true, that if we go and bid to an outside source, that our taxes are gonna skyrocket, that it's going to cost us so much more money, then this works in your favor. Instead, you want us not to do it. You wanna just scare us. I'm oh, seeing things on Facebook too. EMTs didn't get to somebody for 20 minutes. What does that have to do with the Parkside Fire Department? You guys don't even have EMTs. That because we're there. Yeah. Providing yeah. medical yeah. services. And so could the police who are EMT. They weren't there this morning. Yeah. I appreciate that. How many calls did you go on the last month? Yeah. We did 208 calls so far this year. We did uh, 216 last year. We are 62 calls ahead of this. Thank you, Judy speaking. Okay. So what I'm saying is if there's transparency, if the numbers all work, an audit would work in your favor if they can tell you where there's issues where you need to tighten your belt. We have been told for three years straight that it was the last guy who just walked out the door's problem that it was Dietman's, that it was Andrew's. Shirley brought up somebody from seven years ago last meeting. It's not everybody's problem. If you guys have a private entity that's distressed and person after person in an area of responsibility is somehow mismanaging your funds, the funds are being mismanaged. And that doesn't work for either us, the fire department or the borough. It's our taxpayer money. I wanna see you succeed. You're not succeeding right now. You're a distressed entity that is barely clawing by. If you need more money, and the audit shows that, in the last meeting, had you attended, they said, well, if we find that they need more money, we will support them with more money. I guess that went unnoticed. <coughs> Thank you.
My name is Tracy Weaver. I live at 107 East Shelton Road. Not only do I live in the borough for the last 20 years, I've been working at this school at Parkside Elementary. So my question is, if the Parkside uh, Fire Department closes, where will our students evacuate if we have an emergency at the school? Mm -hmm. What about the fire and um, the volunteers that help us cross the roads if there's an evacuation so the kids can get across safely? And what about our fire prevention week that they come to every year for kindergarten and first grade? Mm -hmm. Think about that too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We need to in the bed. Anna, isn't it your goal for us to join with Brookhaven? Because that's what people are saying. And I kind of believe it because you are up his butt all the time. Wow. Um, you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> I have been a member of the firehouse for over 30 years. I have lived in Parkside for 30 years. I was raised in Upland. So I wasn't far from here. All my brothers and my parents were firefighters. I am not a firefighter. I chose to be an EMT medic. I have saved many people today. Myself and Kathy Powers, along with the fire department, helped a lady who has been laying in her tub for over a day and a half. She could not get up. She was a 94-year-old female. If you now wait for a fire company to come in here, because right now they do go out to all medical calls in our borough. So there's a cardiac arrest. They're not there because they're coming from Brookhaven. <clears throat> the police department's busy. When they die, is it your responsibility? I think so. Thank you. Save the fire house. Yes. Michelle Scribach, 157 West Garrison. I spent a day, more than a day, at the firehouse the past few months. I've been there more than I think I've been home, and I think my son can attest to that. Just one night, and what really upsets me is hearing that there have only been, a uh, resident posted, five calls in a week. Well, let me tell you, there was five calls in two hours when I sat there. And it was during a really bad storm. And as we speak, there they there go. go. Thank you. And it was, was in a really that? bad, during a really bad storm, and there were about five calls within a couple of hours. And I lost track. I must have been there for three hours. And as they were coming back, I said, hey, did you guys eat? No, we're going to make something. They start to make something. Nope, got to go. Out in the call. Tired, coming back, heavy gear, and boy, do I know this gear. They put it on me. I don't know how they move. I don't know how they move. Plus, they're hot at the same time going into, of course, more heat. My point is, I became a member of the fire company. No, not because of other reasons that people have said, because I spent more time there, like I said, than I have with my own family, because I want to see it succeed. I would like to see, as the chief has said, what, is our, what have councils done for our fire company? What has others have done for the fire company instead of, <clears throat> instead of, Maybe saying, well, we want this audit, we want to do this, we want to do that. How about sit down with them, the entire council? We voted you guys to represent the residents. And I feel like it's separated. Mr. Wills, I know you said it was it had to be done in a, a timely fashion and quick, but don't I don't <clears throat> agree with okay, I agree that it needs to be done, but you need to include all of council. It's not just one person running the show. Mm -hmm. It's not. I do not believe there is anyone in this room that derives any particular pleasure in having the burr take a look at the fire company's records. Again, it is not something we necessarily want to do. It is something we have to do. I get that, but take a look at the records from what the borough gives them money for. This. That's what I think. And the chief did explain that. The chief explained that. And now there's 
new leadership involved as Can well. You see their tax files? I don't need to see their tax files. I need to see what our money as taxpayers are going towards for them, what they're doing. That's what I would want to see. And I agree with that. I'm not saying I don't agree with that. I agree only with what the borough, my tax money is going towards. Okay, not what fine. they paid for Pico, that's not fine. what they paid for water. Well, they're charging us for Pico, so it's great. Okay, so yeah. if that's the case, then that comes out of the money that you're giving them, I'm assuming. But from I my understanding, I don't know. How much does a fire truck cost? So we, we have two two fire trucks that need to be fixed? Yep. Yeah. Two. And one day I went over there, the chief was underneath the fire truck trying to fix it. Mm -hmm. I don't know many fire it's companies that do that, do you? No. The chief was outside cutting the grass one day, too. But I guess I know that because I've been over there. So please just come and actually see what the fire company does before you just want to just give up on them. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I mean no disrespect, but I do have a prearranged uh, professional uh, Commitment that I must go to, so I must uh, depart. Again, I respect everybody's <coughs> opinion here, and I think everybody certainly is entitled to voice that opinion. Mr. Wills, can I ask you one yeah, question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in this letter that Mrs. Guy said that you and her drafted, yes. uh, it states that the fire company must uh, produce <coughs> all documents by noon today. Not all documents. I thought it was. A significant Given the incoordinated amount of time that has now elapsed, the borough is requesting that the fire company expedite the pro production of documents for delivery to the borough treasurer on or before Monday, September 11, 2023 at 12 noon. Yes. yes. Did you put that clause in there? Yes. And, and again, uh, that was a request. Again, we made no formal demands, and I believe the language in there is that we requested that. And, and that was after a month of them not getting in touch with us but at all. Is, are you aware that it may take them a month to go to the bank and fill a form to get these documents? Surely, I, I think, again, uh, it, it's going to require some time. How much okay. time is involved, I don't know. And they had a month. They had a month. And I they just speaking they, with you. I was speaking with Mr. Wells. Oh, Thank you, Mr. Wells. I know right. you have to leave. Again, I truly believe that all fair minded people can appreciate the dilemma that the Burr now is undertaking. Again, that is a dilemma. Uh, that has been well documented in the news media. I'm not going to speak about the underlying circumstances, uh, you know, for the review of the financial records. But if it's a result of those circumstances, and again, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that the borough has committed to the fire company over the past three years, that I believe it is essential that Borough Council exercise its due diligence and again, its financial oversight by taking a look at the financial records of the fire company. And apparently the fire company is in agreement with that general idea. I think maybe we need perhaps a little bit more uh, time or negotiation, but, but hopefully we can tie this down and tie this down ASAP, as I indicated. Certainly, you know, time is of the essence. Uh, we know next uh, week, uh, next Wednesday, Council has, again, a very important decision to make, a very challenging uh, decision to make with regard to the future funding levels, you know, of the fire company. How council is going to vote on that, again, I just don't know. But again, these are serious. These are critical issues. These are difficult issues. Council certainly has uh, uh, before them. And uh, uh, again, I'm hoping they're going to make uh, informed, intelligent, you know, uh, again, decisions that are clearly in the best interest of the borough. And again, also, if we can, in the best interest of the fire company. Thank okay. you. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I must be part. Thank you.
Hi, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, Tina Crow, 130 West Roland Road. I guess my first question would be, what are your plans with the building if it's vacant? Um, I, I live across the street, so that's a big concern for me. Nobody wants to live across from a vacant building. Nobody is making a decision on to, on closing the firehouse. We do not even have the power to close I guess the firehouse. The decision we're making right now. But why are we not making a decision on bids for an audit instead of for the firehouse? We, we already have agreed that we are. This like meeting is a threat. Do mm -hmm. as I yeah. do it my no, way. This is this yeah. Is yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This, I, you make a comment. This is public comment. Yes, you may make public it is. Comment. Go ahead. And as Mr. Wills just said, you needed time for negotiations. You jumped the gun in putting this in the paper and round the whole neighborhood up instead of just negotiating with the, the firehouse lawyers. I don't need your comment. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe I'll comment you now. always have so much to say. We, don't, we, we all are well, we, and we are there for you. I'm going to ask home. people to please, one at a time, speak. Otherwise, you may leave. Thank you. And also, like the other one said, it's a shelter. There have been times when we've had bad weather, and that has been offered as a shelter for us. There are a lot of elderly people in this community that need that medical service. It's unfortunate that we lost that ambulance service. That was out of our control. That was out of the firehouse control. I think that you should take a vote. I think it should be an outside party that does the audit. I think it is a conflict of interest. And I think you should let the residents vote on what they want to do with our firehouse. Um, I believe our fire marshal is here. <clears throat> Good evening, Mike Daly, your interim fire marshal. First, let me say to everybody, I am pro-firehouse. All sickness is not death. But I think moving forward, the firehouse, it's, it's incumbent upon the firehouse and the borough to work together. I think immediately the borough should take over the liability insurance on the vehicles and pay the vendor direct. I think the, since the borough pays the workman's comp on the fire department, they should continue to pay that. Fuels, fuel bills should be submitted and paid vendor direct. Now that liability insurance, at this time there's only one engine in service in town. Mm -hmm. two, two got towed away. Mm -hmm. The fire department needs to provide what's going on with those trucks and why are we too short maintenance wise. Emergency maintenance should be paid for by the borough, vendor direct. Preventative maintenance should be approved by and paid for vendor direct. The firefighter's gear needs to be evaluated. I just got here. This is exploding. I think you should keep your fire department, but they have to provide the documentation to keep the fire trucks in service. Air conditioner is not an issue. Everything in those engine bays is should be communicated to the borough on what they need to be paid for and the vendors direct. It gives you some breathing room for the audits. But moving forward, that is my opinion right now. I haven't had a chance to speak with members of the fire company. I deal with the fire chief directly. I asked him specifically about reducing the medical calls. And I called the paramedic chief requesting his recommendation, which I have. You're paying five dollars a gallon for that fire truck to go out they are only first aid certified that i know of because i haven't had the opportunity to go three blocks i am too i got it sarah i'm a medic i got i i, I got all that but, but it's five dollars a gallon for three blocks I think that's worth it. To and it's a life. Life. for a half an to hour. Save a life, I'm just worth it. Okay, not a conversation. I am pro firehouse. No, you're not. Okay. Those are my recommendations with the limited information that I have for right now. That, that's all I have, man.
Are you allowed to come up again? No. <laughs> I'm I'll make it quick. Suzanne Dolan. Um, I want to thank the fire department uh, and the Brookhaven and when they came over, my neighbor had uh, a medical emergency and the Parkside Fire Department was right there, right with them. And um, and if they weren't there, my neighbor might not be alive. She looked in pretty bad shape. And having to have somebody else come a further distance, she might be dead today. And um, I want to see the firehouse stay. You know, I want to also be able to help out too. But I have to be there something for me to go to. That's all. And I even volunteered if they needed help carrying my neighbor out. Because you have to go downstairs. And there are times when you need more people. And I would hope that maybe more people will also volunteer. My name is Tess Wybeck. I live at 18 West Garrison, and I really don't want to see the fire house close down. I think it would be a detriment to our community. Um, like the lady over here was saying about her house on fire, how Parkside was the first one there. I mean, that's, that would be really scary for anybody. And um, the storms we had years ago where the straight A-line winds knocked down trees everywhere, and we were out of power. Can you imagine if we did, own, did not have our own fire company? I can't imagine like how we could go through that. And I think that I wish that this council could facilitate, you know, I'm sorry, Monk, but it, it's, it's a reflection on maybe the leadership and, and the way the council is working to be able to have a relationship with the fire company for them to give you the information to provide it. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I would just like, I wish to work together and like, is maybe there's somebody that, that can work closely with the fire company on council, like somebody they'll, that they would answer questions to, you know, maybe I, there's been a lot of things happening in the past few years and maybe there's just, Honestly, I don't know. We had, we had Ms. Percival and Harry were acting as liaisons until the most recent developments with Mr. Powers when um, our solicitor himself said that we need to see the finances of the firehouse because given the fact that he has been president, that um, in order for the residents to be able to trust that their money is being spent as it should be, that we really need to get the documents from the fire company so that we can see that. That's perfectly understandable. Um, it's just, um, um, they asked for an outside audit and they were totally open to that and they have their own, they have to have their own counsel so I mean for them to have their own accounting audit you know a company of their choosing or whatever or maybe one that was agreed upon so you know. here's a question for you we contacted them on the 8th of August with, with the list of documents that the, that the treasurer wanted we did not hear from them for a month they did not call us to say, we would like a different auditor. They waited until we advertised this meeting to finally send us a letter to say that they want a different auditor. So that seems like a game to me. You know what I mean? Like there's a stall game going on, like see how long we can make this last. And see if but is the, fire, the life. is the fire company providing these services that we need? Are they still responding to calls they appropriately? They are responding and to calls, but the agreement when we first started providing these funds was that we would get a budget, that we would, but we got nothing except for um, a couple, three times a year, we get a piece of paper like this. So, um, and I'm speaking during some of your time, so I'll give you another moment. But honestly, um, we've tried to get these. It wasn't until they waited a month 
and then made demands that that just doesn't seem the right way to operate. That doesn't seem in good faith. If they had a problem with the auditor, they should have spoken up right away. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I, would, I would think saying. so, but I mean, I don't I mean, know how you guys. I understand that you said that they want a different auditor, and I would have been more than open to discuss that if they had told us on the night instead of waiting an entire month later. So they can't do that now? That's off the table? Honestly, I don't think that that's really what they want. I think they just want us to have to jump through hoops so that they can continue stalling. Well, that's what it looks like to me because they have not sent us a single thing. Well, I mean, if, if they offer to do that and if you would agree to that, which seems reasonable, you know what I mean? I Maybe it could get the ball we rolling. The council did vote for that auditor. But again, they could have come to us the next day and said, we have a problem. We're concerned about conflict of interest. They never had conflict of interest when Mr. Mr. Wills sat here as our solicitor and also represented the fire company. That was never a conflict of interest. But the treasurer, who was part of a large firm, and there's many different departments, um, apparently that's a conflict of interest. Again, your argument would be reasonable if they had approached us not a month left after we sent that letter, but within days after sending that letter to express their concern. Instead, they waited an entire month, and then they released the statement, and then we advertised this meeting, and then we finally heard from the solicitor. I mean, I understand you guys have a communications issue, everybody's working together well, whatever, but the, the fact is the services they're providing, they are providing them, and we need them. And it, it, it would be really scary not to have them. And have really, what if something big happens like those storms, and we have to depend on Brookhaven, and they're taking care of Brookhaven, you know? Do you, do you know that, like, five years ago, the firehouse operated without needing $130,000 from the borough? No, I don't think they did. They did, and, and it was only until they lost their ambulance service, and now they can't afford to operate. And so we, we've been willing to work with them. We have not said no to the money yet. All we're asking is that they account for the money that's been spent. And I'll give you two more, 10 more seconds, and then I'm gonna ask the next person. I apologize. I know, I know that your argument would be very sound if they had not stalled for a month. Well, I'm not really arguing too. Much. I mean, what I'm arguing is I don't want to see the services stop in part. We don't either. We don't either. What we would really like in an ideal world is we would like to continue using the fire company. We would like the fire company to hold up its end of the bargain, which was to provide a budget and documents. We've never seen their tax returns. We don't know. How much their entire budget is, how much that we're paying. We know how long, how long that before I can tell Rob Powers to cross. I didn't do anything. No, you said it in the beginning. I'm sorry, I, I know it's not time to comment again, but I'm going to tell you this. Well, you're out of line. Okay. Out of line. I don't care. That's not fair to others. That's not fair to be stolen. So that's what happened here. We made the mistake and he's dealing with it. Look in your house. Look at your daughter. Look at you. Okay? Oh, oh my God. God. Did you just oh, mention a mother child? Oh, Judy, come on. Let's go. Uh uh. Mr. Schwager and I were not given an opportunity to meet with the fire company. I had suggested it this summer, and we were not afforded the opportunity to meet with them. So we did not have any negotiations started with them. And council in 2022 passed a resolution, and I won't read the whole thing. I will read that number three, provide to Parkside Council an annual itemized listing of all expenditures of such allocations or appropriations for the immediately <clears throat> preceding year by February 15th. That's in the resolution that council passed 2022. Did we receive it? No. Passed it. We did not receive the report. The report. They gave, Mr. Powers gave you a report in the spring. All we've gotten is these quarterly 
list O numbers. Okay. Did you have anything else before? No, I just really hope that everyone on council like really thinks about, you know, if your house is on fire, do you, you know, I would like to see Parkside able to come and respond. Thank you. Appreciate it. I just want to say, people being special, is anybody that's out there? So that we can hear. Um, thank you. Um, my name is Lisa Pasharel. I live on East Avon Road. I've been a Parkside resident. Please be quiet. A Parkside, not that it matters. A person who's lived here for one year is entitled to accountability just as much as someone who's lived here for 20 years. So that argument when people kind of throw that around, I've lived here for 30 years, you know, okay. But we all pay taxes and we all live in the community and try to be good people. I firmly believe that. Um, I do not want to see our firehouse closed. No one does. No one that I know, none of my friends wants to see the firehouse go under. That's a ludicrous thing. Why would anybody want to not have a fire company, especially one that's just a couple of blocks away? However, accountability is a big issue. And it's very disingenuous to me, the argument that I've been seeing from some people, oh, there were people before us that did, you know, some, I don't know, who knows, but but that maybe mismanaged or did whatever. Why don't you quote unquote, go after them instead of attacking the firehouse? Well, here's the deal. Every institution, whether it's a for-profit institution uh, uh, or a non-profit institution, a for-profit company, every institution inherits, excuse my language, shit from previous managers, right? You've all worked at companies, right? You had a shitty manager or you had a, people didn't keep good records, right? Or like, oh my God, what am I going to do with this? And I'm not saying that, the, I'm not saying that that's exactly what happened because I don't know. But it's incumbent upon the current people that are managing the institution to be responsible and take the hard look at things and get the house in order. And audit, again, I, I thank Mr. Wills, he's not here, but for bringing up the fact that audit sounds like a scary word. It's, an about, it's, a, it's a look, it's an examination. Um, but we get scared by it because we think of IRS audits and all that stuff and we, we, run, we freak out. But it's a way to identify where problems might be, not necessarily accusing anybody of anything, but say, hey, this is where things need to happen. Change needs to happen. This is where the accounting needs to be better. Until you identify problems, you can't possibly act on, on them and improve them. You can't then fit, go after anybody in the past until you know what maybe happened, right? And without looking at the books, how are you going to know that? And as a taxpayer, I think that we all are. How many people own homes here? And if you rent, your, your landlord pays, pays taxes here. So I'm, I'm just saying that I think that having an audit is in the borough's best interest, in the taxpayer's best interest. And I thank council for voting for that. And I encourage everybody to really go back. If you, if you missed it, listen to what council president said at the beginning in her report. It was all laid out there. I think that we just get caught up in the moment and we don't listen to what's being presented. Uh, James Whitman, been a member of Parkside since I was 16. Uh, you guys keep saying we took a month to answer. Just for everybody to know, we only have a meeting once a month on the third Tuesday of the month. And then everything gets brought up to the members of the fire company to vote upon. So you, you have asked for it at the beginning of the month. We might not be able to talk about it, discuss it, and vote on it till the end of the month. Thank you. Going once. <laughs> Uh, Beth Saunders, 62 East Shelton. I just have a couple of comments, observations <clears throat> after watching everybody get up here. First of all, I'm not against the firehouse. I'm 100% pro firehouse. They do provide a valuable service to this community. They have since I moved here in 1996, almost 30 years ago. 
<laughs> Good for you. <laughs> However, I kind of have the impression that there are two entities in that building. There's the fire company, and then there's the fire club. Mr. Powers sat in this room and told us that room is rented out for $750 and they make $50 profit. There's janitorial, there's heating, air conditioning, there's setup, takedown, all that stuff. So all that's billable. Who's getting paid that? Do you hire an outside service to do it? I rent the hall. I'm in charge of renting the hall. Who's paying for the cleanup? Who's paying for the setup? The hall Who's does. paying for all that stuff? The renter. Whoever's renting. So the they're hall. paying seven hundred and fifty dollars plus all those fees. No, that comes out of that. So you make fifty dollars on that room that for comes, four hours. Correct. That room is unsustainable. That room is not sustainable as a fundraising really? option. There's no way that they can make money off that room. But that's their primary thing. I'm sorry. It's not a sustainable fundraising option. I think there's a problem with who's managing the fire company, not the firefighters themselves. That's They're amazing. doing their job. The trustees who run the building are the problem, and they're the ones who need to be looked at. I'm sorry. There's two heads on that monster, and one of them is bad. Mrs. Percival sat here for years and said, I've seen the books. They're fine. Mr. Deepman sat here for years and said, I see the books. They're fine. Mr. Power sat here and said, I have looked at everything. I have dotted every I. I have crossed every T. And we are in great shape. A month later, he's got his hand out. Something is wrong over there that needs to be looked at. But it's not the firefighters. They're doing the job we're asking them to do. And the reason they can't do it to the best of their ability is because there's somebody else siphoning the light battle. That's who we should be looking at. So you're accusing a firefighter? I just said. I'm just asking. I'm accusing the trustees. No, I'm not asking. Somebody who runs that building is the you. problem. Not the firefighters themselves. They're doing the job we want them to do. But there's somebody taking the money away from them so they can't do it. No That's what you need to be looking at. Time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Saunders, I have never seen anybody in this room. Thank you, Brian. Whoa, that's not true. You sat here and said, Mr. Deepman and I have reviewed the books, and they're fine. I never said Mr. Deepman. I said I reviewed what they gave us. So what you're saying is I'm still on the money? Because I'm the head trustee there. Okay. I'm the head trustee there. So you can the hall, the hall is the only funding that we get. The only funding that we have. Nobody else give us money for nothing. We got fucking trucks. That's 92. That's built in 92. That's older than me. But yet the transmission, the transmission, I'm talking to you because you said the trustee. That was talking about me. Excuse me. Is, this isn't a conversation. Are you a resident? Yes, I am a resident. 124 Beachwood. Thank you. And I'm not a runner, I'm a homeowner. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask you Well, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And again, as I was saying, we don't get no funding. None. From nowhere. Y'all y'all got a problem giving us thirty thousand dollars every four months? Are you yeah. kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm gonna talk to them. Yeah. You stood up here and yeah. said that the trustees are stealing money. I never said they stole. I said uh, mismanaged. Mismanaged. We don't have any money to manage. Where did it all go? I don't know. I'm 42 years old, so you tell me. So you don't know where the money in the fire department is? You're the head trustee. You yeah, I'm took over head trustee said. this year, January the 1st of this year. Yes. Okay. Who was before? Okay. I don't know. You don't know who the trustee in front of you? No, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's management. Yes. I don't know. But right now, I am the head trustee and chief engineer. Thank you for your service in doing all that. But the question is still out there. Before you, who was the head trustee? Before them, who was the head trustee? I don't who know. Is the, who is the treasurer right now? I don't know. We don't, have, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we only have so many members that can take positions. Only, nine nine people show up to a meeting, we hold a meeting with nine people. You think you can do the 
Nine people. 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 On top of running my business, take care of my kids and my wife, and my family. So how about you, Brian? How care. about you, Kim? I give you my gear. You can drive. You can run. So if I volunteered to be treasurer, you would back that. Place. You sure would. Come on, come on. Thought. We have a good treasurer. Come on, really? Who is it? We have a vice president right now. No. no. We have a vice president right now, and it's Steve Edwards. Rob is suspended. But he's still running the checks. No. How is he still running the show? He's suspended. Can he sign the checks? He's the only Stevie Edwards not on a bank account to shot sign the checks. So who is? But Rob Powers is? Yeah, he has to sign the checks. With other people then. Two people sign. They have to have two people in the checks. And everyone's on the bank account. So either you want bills to get paid or then you want to blame us for something else. So what you want done? <laughs> okay, for oh, okay. This is up. I thank you very much. Company goes under, they don't get paid. Does recreation have a place to have our events? <laughs> you mean the two events that you have there? Oh, oh. oh. Does it, does it oh. I'm asking you. I'm does asking you. Shh. Here's the thing we're not deciding right now to close the firehouse. We do not have the power to close the firehouse. We do not make that decision. What we're deciding on right now is if we should explore our options. Given the fact that the firehouse has not cooperated up until now on something that we voted on a month ago. So that is the only question. The only question is, should we prepare ourselves by having conversations with other fire companies in case, in case the fire company continues to stall and stonewall? Okay, so that you didn't answer a question. What's your question? My question is, I, I'm not we need my to question. worry about not having Again, a place for the kids to go. I'm not I'm voting. You know what? There are no other places to do anything. No school, no nothing. So obviously well, we'll just have to have it in the there. street. I, I okay. Was, okay. Now, I, I'm not going to You're not going to hush me. Okay, I asked a simple question. This is the community place. This is for the children. So I want an honest answer. If you're thinking about the then I have to look for someone. I'm not to thinking that far yet. Kids. Okay. Well, I'm you have to. Are you, you kidding? Me? You know what? The fire company, you're, you're not thinking about something for. All right, you're out of order. Okay. Oh, no, because I've already told you that we're not talking about this. Okay, here, let me explain. We are voting today to seek bids. Uh, we are done with. Uh, I just like to ask a question. Okay. I have one simple question. You're the council president. You're the mayor. Yeah. Why is she running the meeting? Oh, because we're in Pennsylvania and it's I'm the president. Uh, it's council. That is really the mayor does not run the meetings. <gasps> They don't. They don't. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I will so keep cool. that up. Mr. Dietman never ran the meetings when Ms. Percival was president. Please. We are voting today to seek bids from the fire company within a mile of Parkside. We are not making any decisions today about funding the Parkside Fire Company. We are just asking other fire companies how much they would require to serve as our primary fire company in the event that Parkside Fire Company is unable to do so. We've been told by Rob that other fire companies will charge us significant more than we have been given Park Parkside Fire Company. Let's find out so we have actual facts to work with rather than speculation as we move forward. I will make the motion. Second. Questions? Yes. Since all of council was not aware that this legal advertisement to accept bids 
It was not a legal advertisement to accept bids. I'm sorry. It was a legal me, advertisement to have this meeting. The, no, no. The legal advertisement stated we will have two items on the agenda, a point of code officer and bidding for fire service. We are voting now, on that. Yes, ma'am. My question is, since all of the council, or at least myself, I can only speak for myself, did not know that was going to be placed in a legal advertisement, okay? I did not have the opportunity to ask, who is preparing the bid specifications? Is there a bid bond required from any proposed fire service? And when we make this decision, when will that be determined? When will we determine if the fire company gets their quarterly check in September? So I'm sorry, there's four parts. Um, as far as the fire company getting their next payment, we had said to them when we voted in August that we would like to see the audit well underway by that time. And I believe the trustee just said they only meet once a month. You know what? They've had a long time. They've had one month. One month. One month. My question well, again, had, but they've had my years question to provide again, which you have not answered is, since we were not involved in this legal advertisements to bid fire service, who is preparing the bid specifications? Is there a bid bond required? I'll stick to those. Tell two. me about the bid bond. Tell me about that. Let's start with who is preparing. No, no, tell me what a bid bond is. Who is, pre who is preparing the bid specifications as to what is required in this bid? Let's ask Mr. Wilson to do that. Okay. <laughs> and a bid bond is usually 10% of the amount of the bid. Will they provide a bid bond for their bid? Well, I think if they were doing like construction work or building a, a mm -hmm. physical something, then that would be appropriate. But to, uh, I don't know why they would need, well, I don't know why another fire company would need to provide uh, cash up front. It's not cash. Money. Money, a bond to let us know if they would charge us. We, you know, after after we get receive these bids, we would then go into negotiations and we would discuss things with them. There would be a, a conversation about, you know, how to uh, uh, how to go to contract. But I don't I don't think I don't think a bond would be required to 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 get information from other fire companies. Well, All right, but uh, let me say this. There should be no contract involved because this council will change hands January 2nd next year. So any contract... <laughs> any contract could only go from the moment... That, that, that bid is accepted until December 31st. We're not in contract negotiation. You can bring this up at a later point if it gets Well, I've not been in, Perry and I have been asked to negotiate this and we've never been involved in step one. So I'm putting this on the record that I'd like to be involved if there is a negotiation. And again, noted. All of council should be involved in that discussion. Well, we haven't been so far. <laughs> okay, Did, was there a question we didn't answer? No, I'll okay. Go. Any other questions? Uh, I uh, just have something I want to say. Uh, so, first of all, I want to thank the fire company and all the firefighters for what you do. Um, I've said it before in this room, but um, people don't appreciate it um, until unfortunately the time comes. Um, I, I don't know, about 18 years ago, I want to say. Um, my family's house caught on fire and the fire company was there. And um, I'm very, obviously very grateful for that and for what all the firefighters do. So I take this issue very personally. Um, we've given, this council has given somewhere around 
uh, close to half a million dollars over the last over the last three hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars over the last three years. I apologize. Right. Over, the <laughs> over the last three years, we've given again hundreds of thousands of dollars to this to the fire company, um, and it's our obligation to the taxpayers to know where that money is being spent. As the gentleman said uh, during the public comment, um, I didn't know his name, but uh, this financial analysis could help the fire company correct any issues that they have, help keep them in operation um, and, and get them functioning to the place they need to be. Uh, and again, this is all being brought up because the president of the fire company has been charged four times with theft. So it raises some questions for this council. Um, and we need to cooperate with the fire company. We, as has been said, has, has, a month ago we voted on this analysis and we haven't gotten anything until the last few days. Um, the solicitor told us that, the, the solicitor for the fire company told us they would support the financial analysis. Then we found out that it's not accurate. There's things being posted on Facebook attacking council members. Um, I just think the council and the fire company should cooperate with each other and come to some kind of agreement. Um, this isn't a vote for the funding of the fire company. I would not support taking funding away from the fire company at this stage. Um, this is just a vote to give the council and the taxpayers more information. We don't even know if there will be bids for fire service. We don't know what those bids will be. So it's just a lot of speculation and we're just trying to get more information. And again, this is not a vote to take away any funding from the fire company. And again, if we were voting on that, I would not support that. So this is just a, a vote to get more information. And I'm on the side of getting as much information about anything as we could possibly get. So then are, are, are they getting a check? Because he's saying he's not going to, you're not holding any check. He says he's that is not on the table for this meeting. But thank you. Okay. Any other questions? What is the meeting? Yeah. It's about the fire house. Um, so I just, uh, for years, been sitting here looking for information from the fire company and it's not provided, and no one from the fire company is explaining why uh, the such visceral opposition to the municipal partner, the municipal borough government that is funding the fire company with providing information about how the fire company operates. No one in this meeting tonight or any of the meetings I've attended prior has given a reason why the visceral opposition it just not doesn't make sense to me it feels like well i don't know why that is the reason and until someone can give me that explanation i think it's fair to ask that we either like we don't have to take this vote if, if we just had the you know a, working together we would not have to take this vote but um there's just a lack of information coming from the fire company that we need to protect our our, uh, our financial order for the for the borough residents, and that's our response. We represent the borough residents, and that's and the taxpayer dollars that they pay, and that is our job to uh, make sure it's being spent properly. Uh, also, I just want to say that the level of disrespect and demonization is unacceptable. Okay, we're all members of the same community. We can all have different opinions, but like, you know, uh, being personal and being visceral is really unacceptable. Okay, like let's use our let's use proper uh, terms of respect, like council member and kind of council president, and not you know Anna this or or, or or let's 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 speak with let's speak respectfully. Okay. On YouTube, uh, not on YouTube, on Facebook, let's speak, let's speak respectfully, okay? We do not have to be visceral. This is not how this is supposed to work. We're members of the community, okay? Let's, let's act properly, 
and with respectful for each other. You can have passion, but you can still be respectful. And that is really lacking by some of the people making the arguments tonight. So let's all do better, please. Well, I don't have any prepared statements. So I don't have like anything. But everybody, like else, to say. everybody else had something to say. So. Um, I, I believe the firehouse is the cornerstone of the community. I've said for many years that we can't stand to have empty churches, empty firehouses, empty buildings, things like that. It's what builds our community. I think this vote is premature, and I think there could have been more back and forth, a couple more opportunities. I have had no chance to engage in outside of I think, you know, this forum to where I could possibly have been a little bit of an aid. I apologize, I don't have a leadership position here. I did vote for the audit because I know that um, my counterpart with Brinker Simpson wants only the best for the firehouse. But there's nothing punitive. So I know that dispels a few things like that. It, it's, it was never a punitive measure, but I never got to plead that case to the leadership of the firehouse because we didn't have proper liaisons and things of that nature. So I do think this vote is entirely premature. I don't think we should have been meeting on September 11th. Yeah, There's yeah, just yeah, a lot exactly. of uh, you know, special meetings called out of the blue. Uh, it's disingenuous to our community and, and our families. Um, as far as that, there's good work that could be done that needs to be done. There's obviously a lot of repair that needs to take place. And so, since everybody else had something to say. Thank you. Okay, Harry's good. So, roll call vote, please. Mr. Wolf. No. Mr. Powers is absent. Mr. Sidlow. Yes. Ms. Percival. No, too image, premature. Mr. Swagger. Yes. Mr. Costigan. Yes. Mrs. Guy. Yes. All right. For yes to. So moved. Our next item for business, I flipped them in order, is to appoint a new co co compliance officer. Uh, very briefly, catch us up. Yes. So, um, we had a special council meeting in August where we um, ended the employment of our previous code enforcement code compliance officer. And uh, we then had, uh, we received some applications. We, we, we voted to advertise at that meeting. We then received some applications and this council had an executive session. We interviewed three candidates. Uh, one was Matthew Verdi. One was uh, Tony Tartaglia of Commonwealth Code Enforcement, and we also interviewed um, Randall Woods. Um, based on those interviews, this council believed that Matthew Verdi was the best person for the for the code in, code compliance officer. And I should emphasize that interim. this was an interim position, not hired full time for the in perpetuity, but it, as an interim uh, position. And uh, Mr. Uh, Verdi took the position. We met. We had an orientation, and he did uh, a half a day of work on uh, Tuesday, and then he did a half a day of work on Wednesday, and then he called me on Thursday and indicated that uh, this was not the position he wanted to have at this stage in his life. He was a semi-retired person, and I don't think it fit his semi-retired uh, status, or it wasn't the semi-retired job that he wanted to have. So that left us with a uh, vacancy uh, for code compliance. And that uh, is really uh, why the special meeting was called, was that. That's uh, why it was originally being scheduled. That's why it was originally being scheduled, uh, not for the fire company matter. So um, we have not had any additional interviews yet. We uh, have two remaining applicants, Commonwealth Code Enforcement and uh, Randall Woods. So Randall Woods is the code enforcement officer in Folcroft. 
and is currently doing that position for 30 some hours a week. Um, we also interviewed Commonwealth Code Enforcement. They are a uh, code enforcement firm that for five or seven municipalities in Delaware County, they run the code department. They do the building inspections when there's construction permits, and they also make sure that everyone is complying with the codes, like keeping the grass at the right height and making sure that rental inspections are occurring properly. Um, so uh, I have spoken with uh, Mr. Woods and uh, Tony Tartaglia of Commonwealth Code Enforcement over the weekend to let them know that the position uh, was vacated and that we were still interested in their uh, applications for code enforcement. I'm being too long, am I? You are. I am, okay, <laughs> anyway. So Commonwealth Code Enforcement indicated that they would prefer to do the, that they will do any inspections that we need on an emergency basis, that they are available for us and that they can help us out. Uh, we, we pay them 30 bucks, 30 bucks an hour, or we pay them 50 bucks for $75 for an inspection and they'll uh, do whatever we need. Um, but they're not really interested in, uh, in the position. They would prefer to take over the whole department. And since we're not prepared to uh, make that big move on an interim basis, um, I accepted Mr. Tartaglia's comments and said I would share that with the council that they don't love the idea of, of, of just doing the code compliance services. Um, Randall Woods has uh, indicated in a phone conversation with me that he would be uh, available and interested in uh, being the interim code compliance officer. And so therefore I would uh, like to make a motion that we hire Randall Woods on an interim basis, um, probably till the end of this council cycle um, to provide code enforcement and building inspection services. What's his hourly rate? Uh, well, we would set that. We set it for Matthew Verdi at twenty-two dollars an hour. Okay. So I would say That's the right. same thing. Okay. okay. So that is my motion, Matthew uh, Randall Woods for code compliance officer. Do I have a second? In, interim code compliance officer. Any questions? Okay. I have a question. I sent you an email, Mr. Sidlo, late. Is Mr. Uh, Woods still employed with Google? As far as I you know, nothing has changed since we interviewed him of his employment status. Is there an ad in the paper for code officer? I didn't know if that would give him more time with us versus him working still at Google. I did not think to ask the question, are you still employed when I spoke with him on Saturday? And he did not bring it up voluntarily. Okay, so I don't know the answer to that. Thank but, you. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. And before we adjourn, I will contact him in the morning and we will arrange a time for him to, I'll do a short orientation with him and we'll get him started. Mr. Uh, Mr. Platt has a list of jobs that need yes. to be worked on, so we need him as soon as we can. Thank you. And before we adjourn, um, I would like for us to all wish Theo McCleary, who is right there. He is our um, guy behind the camera. He takes all the videos. He works on our website and uh, social media. So happy birthday, Theo. I know I've totally embarrassed you. Okay, so uh, at the last council meeting, I indicated that I was going to review the air conditioning proposals and some say that, thoughts yeah, about say that from Wednesday. Next week. No, I'm going to I'm going to have a Zoom meeting next Monday at eight o'clock. Okay. Okay. So we'll get it out on socials if you want to attend the Zoom meeting next Monday. Oh, will you put that out to all of council, please? I'll I'll make everyone aware of and what copy they can be aware. Theo so he can make sure uh, everybody will everybody will be informed all right and um one last thing before we adjourn mayor kemp uh, mayor roman excuse me what time do, is community day this set because it's this saturday and what should people expect they expect, they expect to have fun um <laughs> some people can hear you maybe speak into the microphone <laughs> Mayor Rose said everybody can expect to have some fun. Have some fun. Will there um, be food? Yeah, there'll be a few vendors, not many, um, because a lot of the food vendors had previous engagements when we reached out to them. But we'll have Lincoln and Balance. We'll have we will have bars there. 
Um, we'll have games for in the, in the field and stuff. Um, what the vendors? It's like the normal community day, I guess. Starts at 12 o'clock, ends at 4 o'clock. If anybody's going to come and volunteer, starting about 10 o'clock. All right, thank you very much for that update. Um, I will accept a motion. Second. We're out of here. <laughs>